I am Clive Rossfield, brother and shield of Joshua, and you're watching Primal Liquid. What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and right now we are going to talk about features in Final Fantasy IX Remake. Specifically, five features that basically have to return because if they don't return it's just not going to be final fantasy 9 now this list is basically just my own personal opinion you can agree you can disagree that is perfectly fine if you do disagree though let me know why down below in the comments so first of all the main feature that absolutely has to be in this game is going to be chocobo hot and cold now i know some people don't like chocobo hot and cold me personally i freaking love it okay i absolutely freaking love chocobo hot and cold it is a mini game that spans from the very first disc all the way to the end of the game it's how you fight the optional secret boss and you basically get a bunch of really really good gear from it and then of course it expands into the mountain cracks and the ocean bubbles as well now i definitely want to see this return as a fun little side quest slash event to do now i do want it to be a little bit more in depth compared to the original what i mean by that is i would definitely like to see a few more uh, ocean bubbles and a few more mountain cracks as they seemed very stuck on in the original you needed dead peppers to actually do them but then once you actually got dead peppers there was only a couple of each and the rewards were mostly okay but things like the aloha t-shirt and that yeah they were they were kind of they were kind of lacking for sure but i do definitely definitely want to see this mini game return simply due to the fact it's a fun mini game you can easily spend a huge amount of time playing it and i definitely think that it would be an incredibly incredibly fun thing to do with all you know the new quality the new graphic styles and stuff like that so i do want chocobo hot and cold to return that is my number one now let's talk about something that is definitely going to be very very polarizing here frog catching now why do i want frog catching to return so first of all frog catching is a mini game but it's more a unique minigame if you look across all final fantasies there's not really something else that is like frog catching aside from the fact you can get a bunch of gear rewards it is also another way to fight a secret optional boss and it is also a way to power quinner up now i do want to see some changes to frog catching however first of all there are four marshes throughout final fantasy 9 I don't necessarily think they need to increase or decrease the amount of marshes. However, I do think the amount of frogs at the marshes needs to be increased. I think 25 frogs per marsh would be pretty nice. This way, you don't have to constantly wait for the respawn of the frogs. Because the respawning of the frogs can take freaking forever ever and then it also means that you can't just sit on disc one and just get 99 frogs right away so this way you can get 25 on the first continent you can get a total of 50 on the second continent and then you can't actually finish off the frog catching until you actually get the uh, the airship or a gold chocobo which means, you know, they can they can still put the really good stuff at the end of the rewards, if that makes sense, rather than, you know, just having a few rewards early on. I do think that would make this minigame a lot better, but I also want different rewards. Because the rewards in Frog Catching are kind of really lacking. Obviously, it is a minigame that is designed to be done sort of whenever you want. So the rewards in the original FF9, I can definitely understand them, but I want them to be a little bit more focused on Quinner. We already get Quinner's ultimate weapon from Frog Catching, well, technically from defeating Quail, but I would like to see a few other specific items for Quinner. Maybe something that empowers blue magic or something that empowers the eat command, you know? That could make it a really nice, fun 
rewarding mini quest. Now, let's talk about the third thing. And I know the third one, a lot of people are going to disagree with because I want to see Tetra Master come back in the exact same way it was before. Now, I know Tetra Master does have some problems with it. I do think that the actual damage calculations need to be a little bit more obvious for the cards. The physical and magical damage of them needs to be explained a lot better than it actually is in game. And the tutorials themselves as a whole need to be a little bit better. Aside from that, I do want to see an easier way to level the cards up. If you didn't know, you can level cards up in Final Fantasy IX to get them all the way up to maximum power. I want to see this as maybe like a bar on the card so we can actually see how close we are and how far away we are from each level up. Aside from that, I want to see a quest involving Tetra Master with actual rewards. We all well, we can already get, you know, a key item from doing jump rope or the hipple race. Why can't we get anything from doing Tetra Master? If we want to dedicate a bunch of time to that, there should be a nice reward for it. Maybe not a trophy for getting all cards, because that can be really, really annoying, but just something cool and maybe a little unique, you know, just to greatly expand upon it. Because then that gives you a reason to actually go around and find all the hidden card players in Memoria, for example, which in the original game, there's really not much point in doing that, to be honest. So I do definitely want to see more rewards for Tetra Master and ideally a unique side quest related to it. Such as at the start of Alexander, where you're controlling Vivi, you can actually meet... Oh, I forgot, I forgot his name, but it's basically... Um, it's the four-armed guy in the, uh, the alleyway. You can basically interact with him and then go back to the pub to talk to him and he gives you a bunch of Tetra Master tutorials. Why can't he give you a quest at the very start of the game and then he'll he'll give you rewards based on how many cards you have whenever you speak to him and that quest can then go over the entire game i think that could be a really really fun unique little side quest to, to actually do and it also sort of breaks up the monotony of tetra master if you know you're going to get a reward for it then it could be incredibly fun and worthwhile to do so now we're going to talk about one that I think everybody will agree with. And that is trance. Now, trance as a whole is a good feature. Okay, I know. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, don't automatically assume what I'm going to say. Trance as a whole is a good feature feature the unique effects that each character have i think is really really good granted some are a little weak compared to others but overall the unique aspect of trance is quite good however and this is this is one where i'm sort of 50 50 on the big problem with trance is it is not controllable when it happens However, in terms of a story law for trance, I can understand that. Trance happens in game during a heightened state of emotions. So logic would dictate that it is not controllable, okay? Because you cannot fully control emotions. So if trance only happens during heightened states of emotion, then yeah, it makes sense that you cannot control when it happens. However, one of the big issues with that is you can enter trance at the very end of a fight fully losing it so what i think needs to happen is keep that aspect of where you cannot manually enter trance however once a fight ends i think your trance bar should remain as it is this means if you end a fight with full trance you have trance at the start of the next fight if you end a fight with half trance, then you should start the next fight with half trance bar. This way, you aren't going to lose trance just because a little bug decided to tap you on the shoulder just before it ended up dying. 
and it also kind of keeps the random aspect slightly i know it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense with regards to the heightened emotions if you can sort of save it for the next fight but it's kind of i at least i think it's kind of an in-between but i do think trance is going to be the hardest thing for them to actually balance and give quality of life updates or because in order to keep the story aspects they need to keep the actual emotion aspect but that also eliminates the possibility of control or maybe they could add another feature later on in the game just like how transkuja manages to actually stay in trance the entire time maybe we could have something like that you know a permanent power up or something i don't know like, it's definitely one of those things that really needs a lot of thought being put into it for sure. Now, the last one, okay? And this one is, it's not really a feature. It's more so a request. <laughs> but I want to see Terra more in depth, okay? We visit Terra in FF9. It is the world that Zidane is originally from. However, we only see a tiny portion of that world. We learn a little bit about Garland, about the original inhabitants of Terra, and of course, the genomes. However, I want to see a lot more about Terra. I want to explore Terra. Make Terra explorable. Give it a world map like FF9 has. I don't care if there's only like four locations on that world map. I just want to explore the world you know i want to see what the original inhabitants were like i want to learn more about the original inhabitants why did they end up destroying themselves you know how did they come up with the plan to transfer their souls to gaia how did the uh, the life tree and uh, terra actually combine and transfer souls around this is all the stuff i want to learn more about but the big one the big one I want more information on Mikoto. If you don't know who Mikoto is, Mikoto is the genome that is in Terra, and it's basically the one who talks to Zidane a lot. Mikoto is essentially the replacement for Zidane. Kuja was the original creation of Garland to spread basically chaos on, um, on Gaia and basically help facilitate war and stuff like that. However, Garland made him with a fatal flaw he was going to die obviously kuja didn't like that but because of that garland ended up making zidane a new genome that was going to basically replace kuja he was better in every way compared to kuja he also didn't have the fatal flaw of he was going to die early i suppose the easiest way of explaining that is it's like shortened telomeres that happens with clones in most films and stuff like that However, Zidane was not the final angel of death that Garland made. He made one more, Mikoto. And Mikoto was designed to replace Zidane and Kuja and outstrip them both in every single way possible. Now, I want to see a lot more information about Makoto. Yes, I want to see more about Terra as well, but Makoto is the big one because in terms of, in terms of lore then Mikoto should actually be the most powerful in the game. Now, yes, Necron is technically a god, so he should be the most powerful. However, we are able to kill Necron. So that basically defeats him being the most powerful. And it basically puts the party as the most powerful creatures in, you know, the entire world, basically. However, if Mikoto is meant to be far superior to Zidane, just like Zidane was far superior to Kuja, then logic would dictate that she is actually the most powerful creature in existence in FF9 lore. And I definitely want to see, I want to see more detail. I want to see this gone into more. Even if it's extra story once everybody gets back to Black Mage Village after Terra, where we stick the genomes in Black Mage Village, maybe there could be an extra couple of side quests there. Or maybe even Mikoto could be playable. Like make her a playable character. We definitely need Beatrix as a playable character as well. I'm just going to throw that out there. But no. 
I definitely want to see more detail around Terra as a whole and a lot more surrounding Mikoto and her storyline. There's a lot of stuff that can be done there and I really, really hope they don't ignore it for sure that is probably that's probably the one thing i actually want to see the most in an ff9 remake i want to see more detail for terra and more storyline for terra and mikoto but i want to know what you guys think okay do you agree with this list of things that you want to see returning or do you disagree do you think some of these should be gone entirely like tetramaster should that be replaced should frog catching be entirely removed let me know down below in the comments this is going to be a really fun discussion that we can all have but until next time though everybody i shall see you soon